Okay, we're going to take a look at some more information about square roots. This is square roots part two. Okay, so we're going to be looking at solving equations, so you can just continue this on from the last set of notes, or you can start a fresh set. Everything here is going to get copied, some steps for solving these equations. When your variable is squared and you need to solve for that variable, number one, simplify each side. So if there's distributing to do, if there's any terms to combine, do anything that you can do on each side. Number two, eliminate everything on the side of the squared variable. So you want to make sure if it's 2 plus a squared, you eliminate that too. Okay. And then finally, you take the square root of each side. So pause and get that copied. Let's take a look at an example. Number one, first thing we want to simplify each side. There's nothing to do. Perfect. Then we want to eliminate anything on the side with the squared variable. This is our a squared. We want to eliminate everything that's with that. There's nothing with it, so we're ready to go to step three. Step three says take the square root of each side. Now let's take a look at the square root of a squared. a squared equals a times a. So, the square root of a squared equals a, positive or negative, right? Just like if I said, if I said the square root of 25, you would say it was 5. There's no difference between writing it as 25 or 5 squared. If I wrote 5 squared and square rooted it, I would get 5. Okay, so keep that in mind. So the square root of a squared is a, the square root of 9 is positive or negative 3. That's it. So all we're doing is we're using that radical to uh, manipulate this equation. I don't want a squared, I want a. So if you look at number 2, w squared equals 49. I don't want w squared, I want to know what w equals. And if you can think about this in your head, and get the answer, you can add the notation and it'll start kind of making sense to you as well. So if you think, what squared would equal 49? 7, right? So this W is going to end up equaling 7, I know that. The only thing is, on your work, I need to see, anybody can figure this out. What I need to see is that you know that you need a radical on both sides. Whatever you do to the left, you do to the right. And I need to know that you see that it's not just 7, but it's positive and negative 7. So this notation is going to be important just to get in the habit of take the square root of the left side, take the square root of the right side. Okay, so for number 3, it doesn't matter that the b squared is on the right hand side, we still get the square root of both sides. The square root of 324 is positive negative 18 equals b. So remember, anytime we take the square root of a squared number, we get the base number. So square root of 4 squared would be the base number, 4. Okay, so that, that is what allows us to solve our equations with these variables that have squares. Now this one has a little bit of work to do. We can follow those steps. We simplify each side. I've got nothing to simplify in number 4. So now I want to eliminate anything that's with my t squared. So that's this 2. It's a positive 2. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, and I get t squared equals 16. Take the square root of each side, and I get t equals positive or negative 4. Number 5, simplify each side. I would add the opposite here, just because I like to. Then I would add 4 to each side, so now I'm going to eliminate whatever's with my y squared. I get y squared equals not 42, 49. Take the square root of each side. The square root of y squared equals y. Oops, let me try this to the side. The square root of y squared equals y. The square root of 49 is positive or negative 7. And that's it. Now there's a couple questions and some uh, real world problems that I want you to do. Let's take a look at the first one. First thing is a reflection. I want you to copy this question down. What is the relationship between squaring and taking the square root? Now I'm not going to answer this. This is up to you to answer. Hit pause, copy the question down, and really think about it. 
there is some sort of relationship between squaring a number and then taking the square root of a number. I want you to find that relationship. Now these next two are real world problems. I want you to copy the, prop, the information down. Hit pause, and I'm not going to I'm I'm going to get you the answer to this one. So a checkerboard has 32 black squares, 32 white squares arranged in a big square. How many squares are along each side of the checkerboard? So hit pause, and I want you to try it. All right, now if it has 32 black squares and 32 white squares, that means there's a total of 64 squares in my in my big square. However, they're laid out. Okay, 64 squares. So if I have 64 squares total, how many do I have on each side? 8. 8 times 8 is 64. 8 squares. All right, on this one, a concert crew needs to set up chairs on the floor level. The chairs must be in a square pattern. If the floor holds 900 chairs, how many will there be along each side? Hit pause and try it. Draw yourself a picture if you need to, but you ended up getting 30, 30 chairs on each side. If you have a square that's 900 inside, 30 by 30 equals 900. That's it. Go ahead and stop and work on the practice.